An American nun embarks on a new journey when she joins a remote convent in the Italian countryside, but her warm welcome quickly turns into a living nightmare when she discovers her new home harbors a sinister secret and unspeakable horrors. Please welcome actors Sidney Sweeney, Alvar Morte, Benedetta Pocaroli, Simona Tabasco, and director Michael Mohan to the South by Southwest studio. How are we doing? Good. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank right? You. See, and I told you Amazing. it was going to be the most watered down version of the names. <laughs> <laughs> we should just like insert and post like the way you say your names, and everyone goes, like, wow, he uh -huh, has a really uh -huh. great like voice. <laughs> <laughs> they will never notice. All right, so I saw Immaculate uh, a couple nights ago. Oh mm. my gosh. <laughs> Did you sleep? Uh, no. It, you want to know something? It's like I started it at bad on my part, one in the morning. Um, I got halfway through and there's the confessional scene. Mm -hmm. And then I turned my computer off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I understand. I was in an Airbnb all by myself and it's huge, it echoes. And I saw that and I was like, you know what? We could pick it up in the morning. <laughs> then I ended up watching it the next day. So that's a testament because it's not easy to really scare me. So great job on that. Uh, but what I'm really impressed with is that Sydney and Michael, you've worked together quite a few times. And I'm mm -hmm. fans of both of the things that you've done. Voyeurs, Everything Sucks, which, by the way, it sucks that everything sucks. <laughs> Do not get picked. I feel like in many ways I'm still waiting for that second season to happen. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. You now have this movie, Immaculate, and I'm really excited. But... Apparently, this movie started with a text from Sydney where you just simply texted Michael, you want to make a horror movie? <laughs> like, tell me about that text. Like, what, like what, was, what prompted it? Well, I've always loved working with Michael, and we have such an amazing working relationship that has grown so much over the years. I mean, mm -hmm. I was 19 when I worked with him first, mm -hmm. and I had Immaculate. It's been like my baby for a mm -hmm. very long time. And I knew working with Michael, he would appreciate the film. He, he sees things like I see it visually and mm -hmm. conceptually and cinematically. And I was just really, really looking for someone who wouldn't like push me out a door. Mm -hmm. And if I gave it over to somebody else. And Michael has been so respectful. And I always felt like I was a part of the conversation the entire way. Mm -hmm. And he's also amazing, and I love working mm -hmm. with him. I've only talked to him for like the f first five minutes of this, and I like him already. <laughs> <laughs> I want to work with you, just like just like have next to me as I do these interviews all day. Can, can we keep him? Can I keep him? Is that cool? Uh, I got nothing to do today. Okay. <laughs> okay. Incredible. And I, I the, the fact that you've done so much together, it reminds me of those great like acting directing duos, and I can truly see something happening here. You know, like Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese. Uh, and also Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro. <laughs> so it just it keeps happening and happening. But uh, Michael, you've never done, you and Sydney have never done a genre like this. You've done coming of age, you've done um, erotic thrillers, but this is more of a psychological thriller that has elements of religion. What went through your head when you received that text message and got that idea? I was so scared to read the script because I was like, I was like, I, I, I just want to love it. I also wanted to feel like I could bring something to it too. You know, I didn't want to just make a movie just to make a movie. And, right. But I've loved horror my whole life and I'd always wanted to get to, uh, to direct a horror film. And when I read the script, I was just so blown away by the reveals and where it, it was completely unexpected. It wasn't your typical nun or typical religious horror movie. There were twists, there were turns and where it ended was just, I, I, I just saw the movie when I when I read it. I saw what it could be. And so, yeah, very grateful that Sid brought me. I hear twists and I keep thinking in my head like, hell yeah, it's twists. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, right, there's twists. Everyone who saw it, we keep talking about like the second into the third act and oh my, we'll get into it. Mm -hmm. But um, Sydney, like you both star and produce this movie. How long have you wanted to do a horror film and how did you settle upon like this story? You said it was your baby. It was, I, I actually auditioned for a version of this script when I was 16. Mm. And I, I, like every year, I would go. just keep asking my team, hey, did they ever end up making Immaculate? Did they ever mm -hmm. cast anybody? And I kept following up to see where this film was. And when I was on set of Handmaid's Tale, actually, mm -hmm. I started dreaming up how I would want to shoot yeah. Immaculate randomly. And I remember I, I emailed my agents. I was like, hey, I am think I'm pretty serious about trying to figure <laughs> out how to make this movie myself. I know it sounds crazy. Yeah, yeah. And just went down the path, 
and start chasing it. Yeah, after years of saying, hey, is hey, this still happening? Is, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know what, I'll do it, I'll do it. Like, that's mm -hmm. actually some boss stuff. Thank All you. right, I'm gonna throw this question over to Avro. Like, yeah. so yeah. when you got this script, like there's some crazy things that happened in the script. When you got it, what was going through your mind? And without spoiling the ending, because there's people who haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's, it's gonna really, be difficult. It's yeah. gonna be yeah. difficult. Uh, what, like, just tell me, like, what, without giving anything away, like, what did you think about the ending when you read it? I think it was a necessary ending. I think it makes sense mm -hmm. completely. Uh, you've seen the movie. I yes. cannot talk about it. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but I think it's what it should be, which is nice when you get a script and that it works mm -hmm. and, and the ending is part of it. You know? And um, I was so excited when I read it, uh, first of all, because, because you know, of course, I, I knew Sydney. Well, well, we met in a party in Madrid. Yeah. Really? It's crazy, it's actually. Yeah, it was crazy because we met in a party in Madrid. Um, we were, she was receiving a, an award there. Of course. And um, we were sat down at the same table. But there, there was a gala, so you don't talk, we just, you know, shared just you a so few kind. words. You were and, so kind. and just a week ago, I mean, a, a week later than that, it was like, I received a call from my agent, like, hey, there's a movie with Cindy Sweeney that they want you to be there. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Is it? <laughs> You mean you mean the Sydney Sweeney that I was with? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Sydney Sweeney. Like, okay. okay, so we made a Zoom yes. meeting. Uh, I was in Madrid. They were in, already in Rome with the uh, with the pre-production of the movie. They sent me the script. Um, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved the vibes that I got from that. It, it's what you said. They've worked together, and you know it's 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 good yeah. feeling. So um, I just got into the. Mm -hmm into the trip like that. Now I'm just imagining you two at a table, you thinking you can't talk to Sydney, and Sydney's looking at you like, you'll be perfect for this. That's exactly <laughs> no, but that's, that's exactly what it is. Because yeah. I, I kid you not, I remember sitting there, and I I was with my um, my hair and my makeup artist, Melissa Hernandez and Glen Coco, mm -hmm. and I was like, guys, Guys, this guy is this guy's really good, and they were like raving. They, they love you, mm -hmm. and they're raving about him. And flew the next morning to Italy to start location scouting. Mm -hmm. The moment I got out of the car and I saw the entire team I remember yeah. in the car, I yep. said, "Guys, yep, you guys got to look up Alvaro Morte. He's perfect." <laughs> And I, I called it the from perfect day one. Priest. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome. Okay, so Simona, you were in White Lotus, and. American audiences fell in love with you. Like, they love you. And you must be getting so many roles after this, so many offers. Uh, why did you choose this film role? I'm sure Sydney is a big reason, but why did you choose this one? Because I like it, the connection between us uh, from White Lotus. Yeah. And then I really, really love the script. Mm -hmm. And um, my role is a special surprises because I, I have, like, the initial sequence of the movie, yeah. and um, and it was so so interesting and funny to shoot it in. Mm -hmm. So I feel that yeah, we we had fun. Mm -hmm. You said funny. I wasn't laughing when, in that. <laughs> 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 it's, just, it's very harrowing. It's, A lot of you, funny. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I just remember on set on set when you were like I. I'm not sure how to scream. And oh then, my God. And then we went off to the side and I was like, I'll scream with you. And then we just started screaming in the middle of the shoot, yeah. just together, just to get just to get the screams out. To, yeah. You know? Yeah. It out was to... so helpful, yeah, by the way. Thank great. you. Yeah, it was I was great. like, I can't do it. I yeah. still think about it, but that actually makes comfort. It comforts me a bit. You yeah. know, that there's people screaming with <laughs> with you. That's us scream together. Okay, so right. you mentioned the connection between you and Sydney for White Lotus, but it's an anthology series. You're not in the same season. Is there a White Lotus text group chat that all the actors get in? Does, is that a thing? Uh, no. We can do we it. We should start later. it. Yeah, we should that start. That could be fun. <laughs> yeah. They're starting a group chat, White Lotus. <laughs> 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 now they're watching this like, I'm waiting for the text right now. <laughs> Don't leave anyone out, okay? Yeah. Jennifer Coolidge, you won't be left out. Um, so Benedetta, Michael says like he hopes Immaculate leaves audiences haunted, introspective, and beautifully traumatized. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how this movie accomplished that, because I'm gonna just say this, you traumatize me. Um, and I traumatize myself too, because <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> once I saw the picture, I thought, I, I couldn't imagine something so uh, real, so specific, so, it, it's, it's very well done, mm -hmm. and it, it takes uh, out from the character so much humanity right. also, right. from hers. 
And I loved my character too, honestly, because she's very um, sweet and she tries to, she tries to, to awake her somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this feeling between those two girls, I, I really loved it. And yeah. Michael was so sweet and she, she, we texted each other and we had a phone call, so yeah. it was beautiful to join the film, yeah, honestly. This, this film uh, has like a, like from the start, it just has this sense of dread that hangs over everything, especially surrounding yes. your character. But, but it's very she, intimate too. It's, and it's very it intimate, is. right? But when she meets your character, there's like an instant like yeah, bond. Yeah, she there. wants to, yeah, to, to get her out from that Which, situation. So yeah, I think that it was a, yeah. a beautiful character. As soon as I see that bond, I'm like, protect them both. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like nothing happened to either one of them. Uh, it's so sweet. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, you know, seeing everything that happens in the movie, it just kind of threw me for a loop. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Michael, you talk about like the beautiful simplicity of like a uh, film, citing like the directors of Polanski, uh, Fredkin, Kubrick. Tell us about the relationship between simplicity and tension, because it's so easy to kind of like overdo one for the sake of the other. So, talk to me about walking that balance. Yeah, that's a good question. So, I think, you know, first things first. I've worked with my cinematographer Elijah Christian. Uh, he was my roommate in college, yeah. and so we've been making films together for. 20 years now right. um, and I think one of the things we've just always trying to do is I don't know evolve our aesthetic to be more find unexpected beauty in places you might not not find it and so with this uh, a lot of that came from um, the locations that we were in right. we were shooting in locations that uh, like Villa Parisi which is where uh, a lot of Italian horrors were set in the mm -hmm. 70s um, and we degrade the image as as her character's body is literally falling apart, and as it, we we take the aesthetic and we we make it grainier and we make it grittier, so you sort of lose that sense of the majesty that the of religion that we captured at the beginning to just pure you know primal horror at the end. And so I wanted to capture that sort of. Uh, uh, the arc of the character is reflected in the arc of the visuals. Right, you wanna talk about primal. Um, and I'm gonna <laughs> throw this to Sydney right here. Me and my friend, we had just watched the movie and we got back to our Airbnb at like two in the morning. This is like, yeah, this is like uh, two in the morning the next day she had just flown in and we're just sitting at like the table in the kitchen and we're talking about that final 30 minutes, specifically the very, very last scene that has to do mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. And talk about primal. We said that that scene's gonna stick in our minds for as long as we live because it's so, it holds, it's so guttural, <laughs> it's so, yeah, I can't even, like, I'm trying not to spoil it right now. Mm -hmm. But there's been articles that have described your character as the most unhinged <laughs> character you have ever played. So how do you feel this role has stretched you as an actor? Ooh. Cecilia put me in different places that I've never gone to in, like, such a raw emotional place. And specifically that last scene, I remember we were walking out, okay, we're gonna start here, we'll walk over here, we'll come back. And we didn't rehearse, we didn't plan. We just were like, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I just unlocked, <laughs> I guess, something very deep inside me. Yeah. And that was that was our take. Mm -hmm. We did one take and that was, one that, take. was that was the take that oh. we just did. Oh my gosh, this is almost like, wait a minute. What? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. See, I, I call that going Super Saiyan in the acting world. You know, because everyone has that one scene in the movie that like, you know, hopefully, you know, Oscars and, you know, awards happen and that's the scene that you show. I mean, you probably can't show it for obvious reasons, <laughs> but, but I see that I'm just like, Sydney's on another level. What's yeah. that, like, what's happening here? And to know that happened in one take, that's, one take. that's insane. I have to say that sometimes I was in the, in the shooting and I was looking to the screens, mm -hmm. you know, and it's sometimes like, is that Sweeney? I mean, is that Sydney? I mean, she's performing such a huge transformation. Yeah. She's like a monster transforming herself mm. in, you know, in front of the camera. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to recognize her. You know, even when we were shooting, I mean, it was so impressive. Yeah, it's, impressive Thank is an you. understatement there. But it was honestly, the set was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had because mm -hmm. I would jump into my character, but then the moment we call cut, I'm running over to the monitors with Mike, yeah, and we're yeah, looking yeah. at the shots, and we're, we're figuring out the next setup, and planning the next day, and shot listing, and mm -hmm. 
I, it was just so incredible to be a part of the entire process. Yeah, you were in the zone. Wow. I was, I was really enjoying myself. Yeah. Was there any point you was, it was like nerve wracking to jump into a producer role and like act as well or? I think because I had Michael and then Dave Burnett who also mm -hmm. produced by Lotus. Yeah. Uh, and I knew Elijah and Adam, like my, what I love about Mike is he has his set crew mm -hmm. and his team and they've been with us since everything sucks. So mm -hmm. it felt like I was seeing my family again. And I brought on the line producer from Euphoria, Will Greenfield, and I just surrounded myself with people who I love working with, who I want to support their careers and their jobs mm -hmm. and lift everybody up and put them together and create a really nice environment. Okay, so put the camera on me, please. Look, this is why you work with people you trust, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you gather the crew and you make cool <clears throat> stuff, all right? Now, I love I love how you mentioned, uh, you know, helping people with their careers and like building that trust and everything. South by Southwest, we're here right now premiering the movie and that's it's just a testament to people who've been doing that for years and years and years. So Michael, like talk to us about like as a director coming to South by Southwest, what that means to you as a filmmaker and how that's impacted you. You have no idea how much it means to me. The last time I was here was 2015 with a short film called Pink Grapefruit that uh, actually won the jury prize. Mm. And that award is what launched my career in a real way. That's what allowed me to be a director. And so to come back here uh, after making a couple things for streaming services, which no no, no knock to them, right. but you don't get that audience feedback. And so tonight I'll we get, get to you. Don't yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but tonight, tonight we get to sit in a room of 1,300 people and we get to hear them respond to our work. And there's just no substitution for that. You know, th those types of moments, you know, you really have to take them in and, 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 and feel them because th that, uh, the memories of tonight yeah. will be the fuel that get me through the dark days of writing and the dark days of production. I'll remember like, oh yeah, that's why we do this. That's why we do this. It's for that, those people that are in that room at South by Southwest that night. That's so it means so much to me. See, look, see, this is great. Like, I'm, you're gonna make me tear up. Like, you scared the crap out of me and now you're gonna make me like, tear up with that. You're just gonna take me through the whole emotional spectrum. Yeah. Uh, so, Sydney, when it comes to this movie, like, I was really impressed with the uh, supporting characters, right? And specifically the nuns, who I hear you've casted grandmothers in these roles. <laughs> yes. Like, how like how did they like the movie if they've seen it? And are you gonna cast any other family members in on the action? Or? They haven't seen the movie yet. They're yeah. gonna see it this week, though, and I'm really excited to show them. I'm actually a little nervous though too. Mm -hmm. I don't think they knew exactly what they were signing up for. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> they were so giddy and excited the when they were on set. I don't think so. um, they don't worry about it. They were, <laughs> they were in the voyeurs. They're, they they're were. We, we put yeah, them in, in multiple. Same, huh? it's not it's so not you just the same have thing. a coalition of grannies? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, just, we just fly them around. <laughs> and Sitting uh, in the grannies. It was so cute because they got to dress up in the full nun garbs and. I mean, I the remember. one scene where uh, I'm. She was. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. No, they're they're so funny. Like my, beautiful. They're a lot you of fun. You have a great shot of her. I do. Oh, what's the, yeah. What's the shot? What shot it's is your picture. favorite? It's she a picture made. of my my grandy standing outside of the church because she needed a smoke break. <laughs> With a cigarette. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. I feel like on every movie set, there has to be like an iconic shot of someone smoking like on set. It'll be my grandy every set. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> now I need a collage of your grandy. Right? So I'm going to be looking on your Instagram like 10 years from now and I just want to see granny smokes. And I'll just have a whole smokes. drop. <laughs> so uh, this is one for everyone. Uh, Michael cited the directors who made like The Exorcist and The Shining, which The Shining is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. What are some of your favorite horror movies? Like, we'll start off with Benedetta. Well, um, probably Rosemary's Baby. Mm. It's one of my yeah. favorite Look ones. Look at his eyes. It's, it's, I but, saw that as a kid. But The Shining too, honestly. Mm. <laughs> of course. Uh, Simona? I don't know. I was thinking last night I rewatched it. Um, Rocky Horror Show. Rocky Horror Picture uh, Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like, it's yeah. A, it's a classic. Rocky Horror Show. Yeah, it's a classic. You watched it for the first time. No, I rewatched it. Rewatched it. After like, I don't know, many years. Mm -hmm. But I was like, wow. Avaro, what about you? I think I'll go for Shining, Shining. actually, and maybe Psycho mm -hmm. by Hitchcock. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's a classic. Mm -hmm. And it's also a kind of a calm horror movie, mm -hmm. which is terrifying. Uh, yeah, we'll go for those two. Yeah, okay. What about you, Michael? I mean, you cited them. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with a deep cut. I'm going to say the Red Queen kills seven times, mm -hmm. which uh, has this beautiful score. In fact, it's so beautiful, we stole one of the cues from that movie <laughs> right, and right. put it in ours. <laughs> yeah. I like the reference. Yeah. It's finally, Sydney, before we wrap up. Oh, goodness. I mean, Rosemary's Baby, it was mm -hmm. one of our biggest inspirations mm -hmm. for Immaculate. But I'm an OG John Carpenter fan. Mm. Mm. Halloween. Halloween, the, the thing. thing. Yeah. We so just so you know, me and Sydney said the thing at the same time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll hold that in my heart forever. <laughs> well, thank you for coming by the South thank by Southwest you. Studio. This thank was you. an awesome sure. conversation. Thank you yeah. so much. All thank right, you. and thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys check out the rest of our interviews. Immaculate premieres March 22nd. Make sure you check that out when it comes out in theaters. And again, go to YouTube.com. That's YouTube.com slash SXSW. I'm your host, Juju Green. We'll see you at the next one. Thank this you. Is great. Nice. This is so great. Yeah. Thank, thank you. So you. Thank you. Right. No, thank you. It, thank